guys, it's Jake from Afro TV. Today I've got Wayne here with me and his. What is this? It's a Portal 79 series dual cab cruiser. So, what does it mean that it's portaled? So, we'll put a little screenshot up on the video in a minute. But, so what the portal is, is pretty much gives you a genuine 4 inch lift, so like a clearance under the car. So, you pretty much have like um, your axle come in, goes into a housing. Where there's another gear and it transfers down to the wheel just as a basic summary so that gives so, you four inch yeah four inch the um, tires give you another two inch yeah and you got the suspension as well so another yeah two inch as well so it's like eight inch all up that's and, that's uh, not bad it's pretty cool that it's cool. um bloody stable eh? it's surprising i still i think because the two inch suspension mm. is what keeps it stable so when you go around the three, four, and five inches, you get it gets starts getting real like a uh, slinky, you know, slinky toys. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can say that. <laughs> well, it's not a slinky. But um, but yeah, so onto the front here, I just got um, pretty much when I saw TJM in Perth and Qdel, and they um, I just said like just just do everything the whole lot, so bar work, side rails, winch. Um, the steering dampener and the whole lot so it's um very, very cool what kind of winch is that Twelve thousand so pounds. Twelve thousand pounds yeah. synthetic rope seems yeah. like everyone's going to synthetic rope now yeah. you don't see a winch cable too often now yeah it's a so thing of the um, past yeah the reason i went this bar is actually changed the the shape of the bar it's actually really like nice and sleek now with the with the angles they used to be quite bulky on the front but um they've trimmed it all up and it looks um, pretty sleek now they've got a few lights yeah. here as well yeah, so um, I've tried a few lights in the past. I've had Life Force and um, Livid, and, and now I, try, I thought I'd try out the Terralooms. And um, I think for the price you pay, they're pretty good, eh? Mm. All these um, LEDs now. So I've got um, pretty much both of these are spot down the road, and which gives you a bit of spread as well from the LEDs. And then I've got these um, side ones which run on a separate switch. So that one, the side ones, and the big one at the top there. That runs off one switch, mm. or more like a uh, rocky sort of terrain, where I can see like what's happening in front of the car and on the sides as well. Whereas these are more just straight for highway on the on the high beam. Makes sense. So it just seems to work. Any modifications under the hood? No, I've kept it pretty stock. Um, this is my little thing that I like to do is just to show that with four driving, it's just um, it's about gearing, um, tire pressures, momentum, when to accelerate and that sort of thing and uh but i do have the i drive the i drive is bloody amazing i don't mm. care what, what anyone says that throttle response is what um i find the key so it's um pretty cool little module that there's a little throttle controller right and yeah yeah so i'll show you a little picture there what that does it's got like 30 settings and the thing mm. and like economy right through to what i call launch mode it's just like mm. you put your foot down and the thing just takes off like it's uh, pretty cool and these are not just good for getting more they don't give you more power but they give you more response but the opposite right if you're on like rocks and stuff you can dial yeah. it back down so yeah, it's yeah, easier yeah. to control the yeah, car so you don't get that bounce on your throttle yeah, yeah. so but um if you're gonna crouch down hold that camera in there I'll show you what the portal's all about i don't know if you can see under there you can just walk under the car you don't have to <laughs> bend over it makes it even easy to service which is cool so yeah so you pretty much got your portal or your axle that runs through into your portal because you've got your clearance there so so when you go see marks they'll give you pretty much the portals plus they give you um, all this new bracing and um, they fix the rear diff as well they actually give you a wider track there's brake lines there's um, diff breathers there's air locking hubs it's um, a lot of work so it's not just your portal like as um, your car will be pretty much gone for about four to five weeks with the amount of work that they um, put into this so it's um, very very cool so not only do you go um, higher but you also go wider as well you're actually about probably eight inches wider so with the wheels you're going to go a positive offset which I'll um, show in a minute so while we're here at the front we'll probably talk about the top I see that you have two different sections on top yeah so I got um, I'll talk about the rack first I went with the Rhino rack tradesman style I think it is so it's more flat, it's, it's more to do with the wind resistance. So I used to have ones that had the black like, piece in the front and I find the fuel just got drained a bit. But also loading stuff, you're always kind of restricted to this like basket. 
Whereas now it's flat, so things can kind of mm. overhang and still stays nice and flat on the bottom, you know. So that um, the cool thing with this track, or oh, riff rack, is you've got these tracks um, on there where you can slide brackets in for like your mm. max tracks, your um, aerial, you got like um, gas bottle holders you can slide in there. That's cool. um, there's heaps of little things you can add in there, you know. You can customize it the way you like it. Yeah, yeah. It yeah that, it's cool that it actually bolts down. It's mm. not like you have to cable tie or that to strap things down, so it's all neatly on there. You've got like the shovel holder mm. goes on the side. You've got this other bracket for the shower tent. You've got mounts on the side there as well. But um, yeah, so I'm to the rooftops. I've had a few rooftops in the past. And I thought I'd give the Drifter a go. It's um, so far so good. Nice and nice and light. Um, pretty slim. You can't leave too much bedding in there. Um, maybe it's a sleeping bag. And um, you've got to take your pillows out. So it's, um, but I mean, that's the whole hand still mm. narrow. If you want to keep all that in there, you got the bigger rooftop tents, you know, so. I never noticed actually, most of these tents, the the top of the tent is actually the roof of the tent or the wall of the tent, but yeah. there's a gap between the tent and the lid. Yeah, yeah, so I think it's allow oh. the airflow and try and stop that condensation. Is, um, that's smart. Pretty cool. But that lid, it's the same as like your car, you can actually walk on top and you can load up to I think okay. um, between 80 and 100 kilos, but you know, you can imagine next that on top of that. So it's um, probably a good bit boaty, but I've had a uh, kayak up there and I've had my push bike up there and it's been yeah. fun. So. I think I put some firewood or solar panel or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, when I run the tours, everyone chucks his stuff on top of the <laughs> firewood. <laughs> All right. But, uh, well, let's let's yeah. walk around to the back and see what's happening in the back of the car. Yeah, sorry, it flies. All right, so we're just looking at the front. What is this front left side? It's quite a bit of room here. Yeah, just a little gap. It's uh, yeah, it's awesome to work on. You can fit your head in there. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So um, yeah, TJM put the um, pace shocks on here, so they're the adjustable shocks, um, compression rebound. Um, so you can actually adjust everything on the fly. You can just um, turn this little dial here and you can set it and you get your compression on the bottom there, another setting. So if you do get these shocks, I highly recommend learning how that all works. Because once you have the right setting, this car is just amazing to drive. But if you don't have the right setting, it's such a harsh ride and you'll be wondering what's going on. So um, definitely work on that. And once you've worked it, just, just write it down or memorize it or whatever. So. The other cool thing is you've got an uh, internal bump stop in the shock. So what that means, if I hit a deep hole, deep washout, the car won't go metal, metal, like compressed. It'll actually, there's a little um, hydraulic bump stop in there, it'll slow everything down, so it actually prevents that whole, that harsh hit. And it'll save all your shock mounts mm. and, and, and the rest, so it's a pretty unique feature, I reckon. So it's fairly customizable. So let's say yeah, you know, I get this car. I don't really understand the different settings. Can they set it up for me? Or? Yeah, yeah. So when you go in there, they'll um, they'll set it to like a rough setting. They'll ask you like how much weight you're going to be carrying the next your next trip, whatever, um, and then go from there. So they might recommend adjusting, maybe go back a couple or, or what's the right sequence. But like with my car, because I can take um, the canopy off. I'm losing half a ton every time I do that. Mm. So, you know, half a ton is quite a lot. So I'll adjust those shocks right back and then um, take the harshness out of it. So, so while you're here, you're leaning against the tire, what kind of wheels are you running? So I've gone for the Yokohama Geolanders. Um, thought I'd give them a, give them a go. I've, I love trying new tires, you know, because when I have people messaging me and they're like, oh, what's this tire like? And I'm like, oh, well, I've never had that one before. So I try, and, I try as many tires as I can. So far, so good. I've got um, 80,000 of these now, and there's still um, probably like 8 mil tread. And I'm pretty sure it was about 18 when I got it, so yeah, they're doing really well. But I always keep the rotations up, yeah. tire pressure's right, and that seems to work. So I've got the CSA um, Hawk rims, I think they are, they're 9 inch, um, 17 by 9s, I believe. Yeah. So I went with the nines just because when you let the tires down on the beach, I can actually go a bit lower than what most people can. So that keeps the wheel more direct sort of thing. Because if you get the smaller rim, it actually pulls the tire in and has more chance of popping off. 
We're talking about so, the actual width. Of yeah, the, the width. Yeah. yeah. So like, if you got like a seven inch rim or something, you're probably gonna have more chance of popping it off the bed. So if you got like a nine, ten inch, it'll stay nice and kind of direct, and it'll keep that tire on. That's what I've been told anyway. <laughs> and so far, it hasn't popped off. <laughs> That's good. Knock on the wood. All right. So yeah. Oh. So over here, you can see the bar work. So this continues to the step, doesn't it? Yeah, so with the bar work, they seem to, it seems like every company is going with the, the fatter tube. It just, I mean, it looks good. And I might say it would be pretty strong, but I always thought the, the smaller, thicker tube and the less, less surface area to push in, but um, so far, so good. I mean, I, I don't normally hit too many things, you know, you can see it's <laughs> pretty high. But I have had it actually resting on the steps once and um, it didn't bend or anything, so that was, that was good. All right. And um, actually the other cool feature I've done to this is the chassis extension. So I while there's say, over... There's something missing in here. Yeah, yeah, normally that wheel there is um, over here. Like in there. But um, I've actually got the chassis done, 300 mil, done by multi drive over in Victoria. So while my car was getting the portals done, I said, oh, I might as well go and get the chassis done as well. And a lot of guys I spoke to on Instagram and Facebook highly recommend it. Because of the, the dual cab, already the you know you can imagine your wheel here and you've got the tray hanging over the back it just it really wants to lift the wheels so they reckon as soon as you push the wheel back you have weight more direct and it all should stop that wheel lifting mm. so mm. um but yeah no, i've had a look at their work underneath and it's so solid there's <laughs> like the amount of strength and you know, if it goes into that chassis is quite quite amazing so but no worries about that failing at all i reckon so, that's awesome yeah touch wood <laughs> so you mentioned you got a tray at the back. So how does this system work? Yeah, so I got uh, when I saw Blant in Perth, and I said this is what I want. I want something I can pretty much ha handle a bit of abuse. And with my work as well, so I'm a carpenter. I like to put ratchet straps in here and all of this. So they came up with this design, and and it's nice and light. I think two guys lifted the tray on, like without the boxes. They lifted mm. the whole tray on, which is pretty impressive. Wow. Like, the size of everything and because we did the chassis I managed to get these boxes in here to get a bit more room now so that's some um, handy all the ratchet straps and the cover here and all the rest and we spoke about the canopy and I always wanted the lift off canopy just because I like to have my flat tray for work and I'm gonna have all the mountain bikes and all the rest so pretty much just the jack goes in here which we'll show you a picture of the jack slides in there it's got a little windy handle and there's four of them Pretty much undo four bolts. Then I've got a big cable at the back here that runs all the electrics and everything. Just unplug that and actually comes and then drive it. So you just leave the whole canopy and just drive away from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Literally, I reckon five minutes to take off and probably about eight to nine minutes to put back on because mm. it's a bit more lining up when you come back on. So, but um, I sleep in the canopy on the jacks, like this freestanding. But Debs is a bit worried about joining me <laughs> but, um, is it stable it's pretty stable the jacks that i finally got they're like one and a half ton jacks each okay so they're, they're pretty solid and they don't move too much but these other ones i had oh my goodness they're like <laughs> that was so scary i was like no spend a bit more money and get something decent so, so that's um that seems to work now yeah but you don't want this to fall off no, no. Right? i mean even if i do like this next trip coming up we're doing now i'll probably Put the jacks in, but I'll just reverse the car up at night. And just drop, drop it down mm. onto the tray. Just the day, just just in case. Just never know. A weld could fail, or a buddy, a kid could come along and whine, or you guys could <laughs> do something and wheel me down the road or something. <laughs> <laughs> so this thing is—it's basically all open space, right? So yep. you designed this yourself. Yeah. So got the still got the drop-down slides, which I'll be changing soon. Um, so I got the 60 liter. Other side, I've got a 40. As you've got two fridges? Yep, so one's fridge, uh, which is set on like two degrees, two degrees, something, and the other one's a freezer. So that's pretty much how I run now. And it's working really well. Alright. And we've um, so got a little drawer here. Is it like a chopping board underneath? Yeah, so all this is kind of temporary again, just to try it out. So I wanted to make drawers that, you know, you just never know what size drawer to make because you're always going to find something that's like, just won't fit and it's like oh, I wish I made that 10 mil bigger or, or one inch bigger or something you know so so there's kind of a cheap setup for now 
yeah, once I'm happy, I'll get all done out of um, aluminium. Mm. But um, yeah, I've got plenty of uh, tables so that comes out there. And I can actually open the drawer as well with it. Oh, okay. That's so fine. I can actually take stuff and put on there. What's in your drawer? Uh, just noodles and we've gone all budget for this trip. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your pantry basically? Yeah, so that's the pantry. Yeah, you got a barbecue there? Yeah, I went to, uh, I don't know if we like classing as glamping now, so we like <laughs> the, got the weather happening. <laughs> you could do roasts and uh, burgers and all the rest. And so I do the cappuccinos, he does the roast, but yeah, they're not yeah. glamping. It's no, hardcore no, no, camping. No, no. <laughs> I've got the cooker as well. And I've got an oven, <laughs> so it's like, I think we sorted and a, for... And a five star hotel room up on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. got a little... Uh, Hardcore. Wash by station other side. And... <laughs> <laughs> Alright. But, but no, it's all, uh, it all works. Um, my next setup will be the, actually the stand-up fridge. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I've seen quite a few people actually switching to them nowadays. Yeah. And everyone keeps saying... a little bit more and... Yeah, a lot of people are saying, I oh, worried about stuff falling around, but... It's got pack it right and use yeah. containers just yeah, like jam clear. in there. Yeah, and yeah. Work, so. And they're back here, there's a bit of room, so you've got two tires in there. Yeah, so because of the chassis down, I've got more tray to play with. So I just keep everything, I like to keep things nice and like in line. And if I drop down a rock, I don't want to, I can hit on here. I don't, don't have to worry about tires and all this rubbing. So that was the main plan behind that. We've got um, a little access, so with this tent you can actually access it from three sides, so you've got back, side and front as well. So, I oh, see so you've got a little light to the back as well? Yeah, yeah, they, um, tail ends again, little s spot spreads. Mm. And um, went with the crash pad rubbish bags, so it's actually cool, pretty cool with these. And, um, you can hose them out because they've got like a plastic in there, okay. so you can just chuck anything and then just hose it out when you get home. So they're waterproof, right? Yeah. So one, um, this will be all the, pretty much um, all the food. That one's like all my mats for the shower and um, mm. bloody dust pans and all the rest goes in that one. So. And I see this comes with a tow bar. Got a yeah. recovery hitch here. Yep, so Mark's adapters give you actually a drop down hitch as well. Okay. And so much higher, so that's my work trailer. And I've got some solid um, yeah, recovery points. So what's this one? That's um, Factor 55. Okay. That's pretty much the same like yours. Just um, I think it's more for shackles. So it actually be, looks like it came for both because it's got a rounded yep. angle. Yeah, so you might put both soft and yep, yep. Uh, that's genius. Yeah, awesome. So, so speaking of emergency gear and recovery gear, I've heard that you have an emergency box here. Oh yeah, you gotta have the gotta keep um, hydrated and the, the nerves calm for our trips. <laughs> A little, uh, little bar here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a variety. There's actually a few more because we're going to make a Long Island iced tea tonight. <laughs> it's an emergency box. Well, it's red, so it's an emergency box. <laughs> all right. Uh, what's in this one? Uh, this is all the cutlery. Oh, okay. So i got the um, jet boil, the cutlery there, and just the uh, cups and whatnot. So. i got some fancy luggage up here. Yes, yeah, so that's a little um, spot for the luggage. Normally, um, we've got two of these bags and they kind of fit really well together. Strapped on there and then move around. Oh, so you've got a table hidden back there? Yeah, table. But, um, yeah, another, another table here as well. Freezer. Got lights here. Mm. Oh, this yeah. one I got from J Car. Oh, yeah. They're handy. And, um, then oh, I so got, you've got your um, light tricks there. So I went with the Red Arc um, BMS 30. I was looking at the Red Vision, but I think for what I do, like I like to keep it simple. That's probably, that's as simple as I'm, <laughs> you know, sorry, that's... That's as high-tech as I get. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> BMS. <laughs> so that's all controlling the um, AllSpark um, 150 lithium battery. Okay. From um, Offroad Living. Yeah. And that's heaps, like, I mean, with the fridges and the oven, the most I'll draw is probably... 15 amps. And you do a fair bit of driving so it recharges. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's actually another thing. A lot of people say to me, Am I going to go solar on the roof? And I'm like, Well, when you rock up to camp, you don't wanna, you're not going to park in the sun. Yeah. You're going to find shade. So your solars are going to do nothing really. But I do have a red arc blanket 
that um, I've got about a 10 meter lead on it, mm. so I can just um, chuck that there in the sun and hook it up. So, all right, but, uh, well, you've got an awning on top of it, yeah, another one in there, and a um, little shower tent by a pit pitch there, okay. So, this folds out to a little, little kid. And oh, the shower, the kind of little shower, don't, don't lie, it's sick. Hardcore camping, it's all I need. <laughs> so it's a pump, <laughs> yeah. So, I, we heat up a bucket of water on the fire, and we connect the hose on here, drop it in the bucket, and then it's up to the shower. Head. So, it's um, so it's the same as the little 12 volt yeah. pumps that you throw in a bucket, it's yeah. just yeah, mounted. I mean, it's got enough pressure to kind of run a hose, hmm. but it, it does like three and a half liters or four liters to a minute. Okay. So it's it's um, pretty efficient. So where are you getting water from? Does it have water tank or? Oh yeah, got an 85 liter tank. 85 liter. Yeah, underneath the tray. Oh wow, that's a lot of water. Yeah, that's not bad. And fuel? A few showers. Um, still the stock tank, the 130. Hmm. I was going to do the Brown Davis uh, 110, so I'd have 240 all up, but. I'm kind of pushing the weight a little bit, I think, so I mm. might, um, might just might do a weigh bridge first, like fully loaded, mm. and then see what I have to play with. Because um, once I rip out the fridge side, and that fridge I'll probably save about 30 kilos, so it might be enough for the tank to go in. It's always <laughs> the game, isn't it? It's the numbers yeah. and weight. It's, it's so heavy, like, just, yeah. no one used to really think about it, you know, you just load up and buddy go, and now yeah. it's like, oh wow, yeah, no. Yeah. Bearings yeah. must be copying the flogging and bloody the center of gravity and you know and you see so many crashes now where people yep. just um, yeah. overloaded. And I've seen too many people uh, their car is exactly on the mark without them in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys need to be careful then. But mm. all right, let's but have a quick uh, look inside. Yeah, excuse the mess. <laughs> so, so I'm standing here next to the car. Uh, I can barely reach. <laughs> what do you have in here? So again, I keep it pretty simple. All stock um, in the front here. I've got some other cup holders here. But uh, with the Hema HX1, I've actually been really lucky. I know a lot of people have had dramas with these, eh? but so mm. far, I've had it for like four years now. Oh, wow. It hasn't missed a beat. Turns on every time. Um, that's good. Got the little Jimmy. Oh, sorry, it flies. <laughs> no, if you're around. Um, TX3500, nice and slim. It actually fits behind the cup holder. Oh, yeah. So that's pretty much the little unit. And yeah, I've got the, oh, I've got the air locking hubs here for the portals. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, no, I don't know if you can see that. That's uh, a so fancy handrest here, armrests. So that's the one stone armrest. That there has added 10 grand value to this car. <laughs> They're obviously cheaper than that. <laughs> well, it's all about hardcore, isn't it? So comfort is important. Yeah, it's so cool. The passenger gets one as well, which is just awesome. Normally, you have the driver, you know? True. But this guy actually made the passenger. But um, the young bloke does ask for his in the back, but he doesn't get any yet. So <laughs> he, can, he can wait. Yeah, I always <laughs> wanted one of these. I have to look if they make it for my car. Yeah, you might be able to tweak something to make it work. Yep. But um, just got the canvas seat covers and to keep all the, uh, I think I like kind of waterproof a little mm. bit. So. so the seats are stock or have you changed to some fancy seats? No, I actually um, kept them pretty stock. Hey? A lot of people say change it, but maybe my back's just molded to them now and, <laughs> and it doesn't, it feels okay. So. And like yeah, you done, do it for a bit of driving. So. Yeah, I mean, I do, I've done like 10 hours straight and they've been, they've been mm. good. So. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much it. Not to nothing to flash. While walking out of the car, I noticed that you've got something on the on the paint. Yes, yeah, so it's a little product from a company called Bushwrap in uh, Queensland. It's actually like a protective film that you can do it yourself, or you can get it professionally done. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just like a, it comes in all pieces, so it'll have it all labelled like back door, top mm. bed, or, or you know, whatever. And you pretty much just spray your soap water and um, squeegee it on. And um, yeah, it's, um, it's supposed to stop all the scratches. And if you get a deep one, you can get like a little heat gun onto it and like, close it up. But so That's far, awesome. It is pretty cool, though. Like, it's nice and cheap. I had no idead. idea like there's anything on it. Like, from distance, I couldn't even tell. Even up here, like 
I really yeah, don't think you, close. Yeah, when you wash it, it's like, um, you wouldn't even notice there. It's, it's so freaking cool. That's cool. It's, uh, yeah. Alright, so that was a quick walkthrough um, of Wayne 79. As you can see, there are quite a few things done to it. Any future mods? No, nah, probably just that fridge. I uh, might do an engine mod one day. We'll see. See how it goes. If it starts to struggle, I mean, it's getting to 80,000. But I think I should still be right for a while. Mm. But um, and I might change rooftop next year. Try something okay. different. No, like there's nothing wrong with it. I just want to. I just like to try different things. So there might be a new rooftop in the market. I might uh, like. We try things so you guys don't have to. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's the main thing. Yeah. Just, yep. I love giving the feedback, like when we're at, when we're at shows or when people pull up and ask what's that like and it's just like, like actually give them an honest yeah. um, review on it you know and say oh well, I've tried that done that that's what to look out for and yeah. yeah as you can see on our channel our cars go through a bit of a torture so yeah. we like to test product in the real world yep. all right well thank you so cool. much for walking us through this it's pretty right. exciting someone splash into the water <laughs> <laughs> Do a little pan, do a little video there. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Western Australia. <laughs> Alright, guys, cool. that's it for this one. Thank you.